Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today I thought we would have a look at the update name, since of course we know it from the first dev blog, so it's time to start thinking about what it could mean. Now, uh, generally when it comes to these videos, understand that they're just kind of thought exercises. This video is going to be trash. Um, it's just going to be going through a bunch of different ideas, a bunch of different thoughts, with one very obvious one, which it probably is, and then a bunch of other ones uh, just to kind of have a little bit of a laugh and a giggle about. The other thing is, the reason why I'm making this video is because I've injured myself so I can't work out. So I have a period of time during the day where I'm not doing anything. So welcome to that period of time. Uh, the other thing to also mention is sometimes it's just nice to chat about random things, and this this is one of those things to randomly chat about. Uh, so let's get into it. Let's get a bunch of information out there. Don't expect a lot from this video, apart from some interesting ideas uh, that maybe you can move forward with. Now, when it comes to the update name, it is Fire and Ice, uh, which kind of sucks because Ice and Fire is much easier to say, but say la vie, uh, it is kind of how it is. And uh, obviously, the first port of call that people have gone to is the fact that there is a bunch of media that is already named these things. And generally, when it comes to uh, update names, uh, they are either around a specific vehicle or they are around some kind of piece of media. So therefore, it can be relatable to the general prod prod well, uh, population, sorry. And uh, because of that, uh, a lot of the update names have been pretty simple uh, in the past and I'm sure will be going forward. So the first piece of media, um, being with Fire and Ice, is of course the Winter War. And the reason for this is if you type in Fire and Ice in the internet, you'll get a bunch of different options. The first one is Fire and Ice, the Winter War of Finland and Russia. This was a documentary film which was produced, written and directed by Ben Strout and uh, this was actually produced in 2006. It would be kind of cool to watch this. Uh, I couldn't actually find uh, it anywhere. It's been released on DVD, which is fantastic because uh, hardly anybody sells DVDs around me uh, anymore and I couldn't find it anywhere. So uh, we'll have to see if I can find some kind of copy of it, even if the seas have to be sailed. Now, when it comes to uh, Fire and Ice as a general idea, um, it kind of does relate pretty well to the Winter War. Um, if you don't know about the Winter War, it was when Russia or the USSR invaded Finland uh, during the Second World War. It was seen as a Pyrrhic victory by the Soviets because they were able to gain some of the territory that they wanted, but also at the same time suffered heavy losses during it. Some people use it as a connection to the more recent conflicts which are going on in Ukraine. They can do that. It's not really the same story. But the, uh, the USSR was able to gain what they wanted, they just did it at a higher price than before. Now Finland's an interesting country when it comes to Second World War, they were not technically allied with Germany but they were on the same side and also shared a lot of similar equipment and also uh, a lot of people after the war, like post World War II, say that they were an ally of convenience to Germany uh, because of the whole USSR thing. You can make up your opinions as you want, uh, there are definitely some interesting ideas ideological uh, rabbit holes to go down when it comes to Finland. I'm not interested in doing it because I'm not interested in pissing off Finnish people or Scandinavian people at this time. Maybe in the future, we'll see. But when it comes to Finland in War Thunder, uh, it is one of those nations uh, which has already been said that it's coming. Um, the Swedish tech tree is becoming the Northern European tech tree um, very quickly. The reason for this is because Sweden does not have enough vehicles to be able to fill all the, of the... Uh, sorry, it does not have all of the vehicles to fill all of the BR gaps in the tech tree. Now we've pissed off all the Swedish people, let's talk about why Finland can't be an independent tree so we can piss off them too. The, uh, there is not enough vehicles in Finland either. Um, the issue with all of these different nations is they have huge gaps in their tech trees and yes they could be filled with fake vehicles or what you could do is you can combine them and make them into actual proper tech trees and not have to put in a bunch of fake vehicles. Yes the Krankwagen is a fake vehicle. Thank you, Sweden. So when it comes to the Finnish stuff, they did use a ton of different uh, vehicles over the years. Um, during the Second World War, 
which is usually where, you know, the game starts, maybe a bit uh, pre-World War II. Uh, for certain nations, they did use a lot of Cold War equipment as well, and also they do use some modern equipment. So Finland is a perfect nation to be able to put in to a specific tech tree, which would be the Swedish one. Now, Gajin already confirmed through the wonderful words of BVVD that uh, something like uh, Finland will be coming as a subtree for Sweden in the future. They did a Q&A last year, said that they were working on it, so it wouldn't be a surprise if people are just linking stuff together, just like how the Fuso, if you didn't know, was actually leaked in a previous trailer uh, for War Thunder, uh, which we talked about in the past. So everything's kind of coming together in this like huge, different, big way, and it uh, looks like a lot of the chickens are finally coming home to roost. Now, when you talk about Finland, um, you may uh, not be surprised that they used a lot of other nations' equipment and kind of modified them for their own. So during the Second World War, um, what was uh, generally found was a lot of German equipment because of their alliance with them, uh, and then also a lot of Soviet equipment, which they captured during the Winter War. Uh, so, uh, for example, you had stuff like the ISUs, the 152s, you had the KV-1s, kv one one E, of course. Hopefully, uh, we get a KV one E slash KV one B in the standard tech tree for the Swedish, so therefore it can finally go up in BR where it deserves. Uh, the Stug 3s as well, Panzer 4s, uh, the T-34s as well, T-50s uh, could be around the place, um, and then also stuff like the BT series of vehicles. Now, uh, everybody looks at the BTs um, because there is actually a BT which is a bit unique, and that is the BT-42. Uh, it was an assault gun. It was a modified uh, BT uh, with a monstrous turret on it, uh, and then it had access to a 114 millimeter howitzer, uh, which uh, could be able to fire stuff such as heat. Uh, it would be able to donk uh, on certain things like T-34s, and you should have a bit of fun with it. Uh, so that is the vehicle that everybody points to as, oh, we need Finland in the game because of this one specific specific vehicle, even though tech trees, you know, are made up of a ton of things. And as we found with Israel, and as we found with China, there is a lot of negative reaction to copycat vehicles. And every single vehicle that I've mentioned there is a copycat vehicle, but apart from the BT-42, but with minor modifications. Now, let me know how Israel's doing. Oh yeah, it's the least played tech tree in the, in the game, and that is literally why... Um, because of the fact that all of its vehicles are basically the same, and also the barrier to entry is a little bit higher than other ones. They also had stuff like T26s uh, in the place, and all of that wonderful stuff. So they have a bunch of these standard Second World War vehicles, uh, which would definitely be able to help out uh, the good old uh, Swedish tech tree, so it, it would be really nice to add in. The other thing you might have also noticed is a lot of aviation elements from Finland have become premiums uh, for the Swedish tech tree, uh, but ground vehicles for Finland have not uh, become a bunch of premiums for the Swedish ground tech tree. This would indicate that they're working on a, a sub tech tree for Finland, which will go into the ground portion instead of the aviation portion, and don't even get me started on helicopters. So the other thing to also note is, uh, along with all of the ground vehicles for World War II, the uh, Finnish also have a ton of post-World War II stuff. They have T-55s, well, a lot of Soviet things. They have T-54s, T-55s, T-72s, PTs. You know, they have all of the standard stuff. They even used a lot of BMP-1s and BMP-2s uh, around the place uh, to be able to use. Uh, they even, uh, during the Second World War, used stuff like the BA series of vehicles, like the BA-10, such as we have the BA-11 uh, in the game itself, uh, which is quite nice. Uh, so what you're getting, once again, is a big mix of a bunch, a bunch of different things. The T-72s themselves are the M variants, M1, M1K, and also M1K1. Uh, these, of course, are the export variants of the T-72, uh, so they will be different to the standard ones. A lot of people have talked about the M coming to Germany, uh, because, of course, the East Germans used it. It's uh, we'll, we'll have to see what goes on, uh, but basically you have a bunch of modernized, uh, vehicles which uh, the Finnish uh, could easily use and of course uh, as a shift uh, of what kind of went on uh, so the uh, the Finnish went from using a lot of Soviet equipment 
uh, to a lot of, uh, let's call it, Western Europe equipment. So nowadays, instead of using stuff like T-72s and T-55s, they use Leopards, 2A4s and 2A6s. Uh, they also use BMP-2s still, uh, but they now have the CV series as well, the CV-9030 FIN. Uh, this is one with a 30mm Bushmaster, standard CV-90, and they also make their own stuff. So the Patria, for example, uh, the good old the AMV, uh, is in the position as well. So when it comes to their more modern equipment, uh, there's still stuff which is copycat compared to what we have in the game. Um, but also, there there's a few little unique things that they could throw in here and there, and as a sub-tech tree for Sweden, it would be fantastic. The idea of an independent finish tree is absurd, uh, because they would, not, they would have less lineups than good old Sweden. Uh, it would be absolutely terrible to play. Anybody who believes this uh, should be not allowed to discuss uh, further opinions uh, when it comes to what to be added to the game. Uh, so generally, that is the main narrative that's going around right now, that Fire and Ice is to do with Finland uh, because of a random documentary that was made about 15 years ago. Uh, so we'll have to see what goes on. <laughs> Then we go into some novels uh, that are called Fire and Ice. Uh, there's also the Fire and Ice Discover the Dangerous Beauty of Russia's Kamchatka Peninsula, uh, which of course is a bunch of mountains and similar things. Uh, so maybe we'll get a bunch of Soviet vehicles in or Russian vehicles. You can even go skiing there. There's a bit of lava. There's a ton of different things. Uh, you know, some pretty interesting weather. Uh, it even has bears. Uh, so, you know, it seems all right. Uh, then you've also got um, a book from, I believe, 2017 from Victor Brooks uh, called 1967, The Year of Fire and Ice, which is obviously talking about America. If you didn't know about the 60s in America, kind of an interesting time. Um, so just to kind of give you an idea, on New Year's Day in 1967, the 200 million Americans who lived in the U.S. were about to experience a fascinating, exciting, and sometimes bewildering 12 months that were for many an iconic portion of their lives. Despite the fact that the coming year produced no Black Friday, Pearl Harbor, or 9-11 attack, the nation still underwent dramatic changes in everything from support for the Vietnam War to approval of candidates for the 1968 presidential election to attitudes towards sex with strangers and what constitutes the status quo. Almost without significant forewarning, Americans in 67 witnessed a simultaneous cooling of Cold War tensions with the Soviet Union while the war in Vietnam exploded into a white-hot conflict that inflicted nearly 200 American battle deaths a week. Meanwhile, young people at home were alternatively uh, or alternate alternately listening to the cool sound of the Beatles' new Sgt. Pepper album, by the way that album is trash, and Jim Morrison's plea to get ever higher in Light My Fire, a very good song. On television, an emotional, passionate James T. Kirk shared an enterprise bridge with the cool and logical Mr. Spock. So maybe at a very, very long um, and a very, very uh, big uh, long shot, I suppose, maybe it's about this book and 1967 in America. And maybe it's about Star Trek. Who knows? Anything's possible. Um, probably not this one though, but it seems interesting, and I think that's what's important. And of course, the big one that you have when it comes uh, to these ideas, A Song of Ice and Fire, written by everybody's favourite novelist, George R. R. Martin, who continuously gets uh, compared to J.R. Tolkien, which is a disservice to J.R.R. Tolkien's work, because at least he could finish a story. I'm still waiting on the books from George, looking forward to them. I've read all of his other ones. Let's see what happens. My guess is they never get made, because he doesn't know how to finish a story. But who knows, maybe the death and decrepit ideas of Game of Thrones will finally come somewhere, and maybe it's War Thunder. Who knows, maybe we'll get a bunch of profile pictures. Let's see how many Baratheons we get. There's also a Fire and Ice film from 1983, and all I can say is it's incredibly 80s. It's an animated epic dark fantasy adventure film, so it joins uh, the ranks of about a million of those uh, made in the 80s, but here's the plot, uh, so maybe you can find something from it. From their citadel ice peak, the evil Queen Juliana and her son Necron send forth a wave of glaciers, 
This forces humanity to retreat south towards the equator. Necron uh, sends a delegation to Firekeep, the volcano citadel of King Yarol, ostensibly to request the king's surrender. In truth, the Ice Queen has orchestrated it as a ruse, so that her subhuman soldiers uh, can abduct Yarol's beautiful daughter, Princess Tigra. Juliana feels that Necron should take her as a bride to produce an heir. Well, I mean, that... That took a turn, uh, I'm not going to lie. Um, but maybe you can find some hidden meaning from that uh, when it comes to War Thunder. You know, maybe maybe they'll buy out I don't know, another another company. Maybe it's a maybe it's a reference to their new game that they're making, uh, the uh, Age of Water. Who knows? Anything anything's possible. Uh, but I thought I'd just add that in as a little bit of fun. On my perusals around the internet, I also found something else: uh, a coral. Uh, so this is uh, the Fire and Ice Vietnam coral. You can get it for twenty four euros fifty. Uh, so maybe. Uh, the update is about a coral. Uh, maybe we're going to get an expansion of the Coral Sea. Maybe we're going to get a big expansion of naval. Uh, it's a, a, a zoanthus uh, coral. No idea what that means. Um, probably means certain colors and certain looks. Uh, but yeah, so uh, it could be that either. Uh, the fact is, uh, this video was pointless. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I'm bored as all hell, and I'll talk to you soon. Peace be with you. I'd like to thank Forge, Siegebreak, Carrion Crow, Nicholas Richardson, E Love Goat, Pyman, Winter Scientist, Merciless Reaper, Orange Tail, Teddy, Daniel Stanton, Moxie, B. Young, and also Sem Arslan, Wilkski, uh, Uncle Bean, Derek R., Barine, Lafouche, and Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.